visiting my family and they were based in Malawi at that point. Uh, and I met, in fact, an American working for the UN system, uh, World Food Program in Malawi in Blantyre. And her life seemed very fascinating to me. And I went back to Sweden and I started studying political science and I particularly concentrated, focused on development aspects. NATO is much more of a political organization than I was aware of. An organization where 21 EU countries, of course my EU perception, sit and on a continuous basis talk with the transatlantic allies, the US, the Canadians, the Turks, the, 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 the Turks as well. Uh, that I was not, uh, that realization didn't exist really, and that I only understand sitting here and following the work as, you know, as a partner country. The neutrality as such is, in our view, not fully consistent with our membership and the role we wish to see ourselves uh, pursue uh, within the European Union. We are military non-aligned, so, and that implies, that explains that we do not uh, seek membership at NATO. Uh, but that this said, we want to try to deepen our cooperation with NATO as far as possible. easy to separate them and I think a big mistake in the past years has been that we have in fact addressed all purely the security concerns or looked at only the development issues but I think uh, increasingly there is a realization in the international community I know in my government I understand at NATO as well and I think we so warmly welcome that that you have to have a much broader approach to development and you have to have a much broader approach to bilateral relations you have with the country. Our important troop contributing country. We give high importance to our uh, our participation in the ISAF mission. So uh, the role as troop contributor, uh, troop contributing partner country, uh, is essential, and thereby also improving our role as a troop contributing country in terms of having access to information, be able to influence the decision shaping process of NATO with regard to the, the, the missions in which we participate to care for ISAF. That will be an important part. And then on the military side, everything to do with interoperability, uh, transforming our defense forces, uh, being able to meet the requirements, the standards that NATO is setting. In fact, you know, it's as important to us as an EU country as it is as a NATO troop contributing country. An image problem, if I look at sort of from a Swedish, my perspective, our country's perspective, NATO, the name, symbolizes partly still the Cold War. There's so much NATO does, so much that has happened these last sort of 10, 15, 20 years in fact, that the general population, at least in my country, is not aware of. And here my biggest surprise, and I must say very positive, is to see that NATO some t somewhere adapts to the needs and concerns of partner countries, be it EPC members, be it partner countries like, and troop contributing countries like Australia or New Zealand or Mediterranean dialogue countries, etc. Um, a bigger flexibility on NATO side and an openness and inclusiveness which I think is positive for the image of NATO. I attended and I was very grateful for the invitation to partner countries to attend the first big seminar which broadly was about the, you know, the, the world's view, the outside world's view on expectations on NATO for the future. The openness, the importance of partnerships that is very clearly expressed both in the Declaration of Alliance Security and was re-emphasized at the seminar. All this is a, for us a very important, a very important approach uh, and for us a very, a very positive approach taken. The main issues have to be debated by the Alliance itself and partnership relations, EU-NATO relations and troop contributing aspects will be important from a Swedish perspective.